Okay, this video is going to cover the setup and use of the auto zero functions in the 2017 screen set for UCC and C. Once we're uh, set up and running in the screen set, on the main screen, the run screen, we see two buttons for auto zero. We have the basic auto zero here on the bottom, which is just a simple auto zero if you just need to set your Z zero for a single tool or for whatever reason, and that's all you need to do. That's the button you want to use. What happens is it'll probe down. You set your movable plate on your part, wherever you want your Z0 to be set. Press the button and the tool will move down to the plate. Touch the plate and set Z0. The other option is the Auto Zero Initialize, which is used to set up for a, uh, a semi-automatic tool change mode where the tool is automatically zeroed when you change it after a tool change. You manually change the tool and then the tool will continue on to, the, to a fixed plate where it will zero itself and then proceed with your G-code, continue on in the code and cut your parts. So you can set your Z0 before you run, before you start the program. You can have as many tools as you want and they'll all zero themselves after you change them. <clears throat> so before you can use these, you need to set up the settings for it. So we'll go to the settings page and the function page, the function tab on the settings. You'll see the z-axis auto zero settings in the bottom here. The first one is the plate thickness. This is the thickness of your movable plate, which is wired to the probe input. If you go to the I.O. setup, you have your probe inputs. You have uh, On the UC100, I think you only have one. But the UC300 and 400, you have two probe inputs now. So the movable plate is wired up to one of those inputs. And the fixed plate will be as well. Generally, they'll be wired to the same, same input. They could be wired to separate ones if you have two available. So the plate thickness is the plate thickness of your movable plate. The tool comes down, touches the plate. And what it actually does is sets the Z's value to the plate thickness. The bottom of the plate will be your Z0, so it sets it to the thickness, which is that distance above the zero. Next, uh, next setting is the clearance plane Z value. This is in work coordinates. After you zero the part, the tool will retract up to the clearance plane. If you're uh, doing the, the auto zero initialize where it uses two plates, that's the distance it'll go up to as it travels to the second plate, to the fixed plate. So you're going to want to set that high enough to clear anything that might be in the way, whether it's clamps or part of the machine. Make sure your clearance plane value is high enough above Z0 to, uh, to clear everything. Note that, remember, the plate thickness is what the Z0 is set to. So if your clearance plane is less than the plate thickness, the tool is going to move down into the plate. So make sure your clearance plane is at least more than the plate thickness. <clears throat> the next settings are your fixed plate position. And these are in machine coordinates so that UCC and C can send your machine to the right place every time. This requires um, home switches on the machine. You must home the machine before you can run these, these uh, macros. Although the simple, the simple auto zero does not need homing. So you have your X and Y are positioned in machine coordinates for your fixed plate. Your first probe distance, when you go to probe or auto zero, from however high your tool is down to your plate, this first probe distance needs to be a minimum of that distance, preferably a little bit more. There's no, I don't think there's any upper distance it can be set at, so I would set at the maximum Z travel you're ever going to see, I would set it a little higher than that. Then you're covered all the time, you'll never have the probe stop before it reaches the plate. This, uh, these macros use a two probe system, a double probe, first at a higher speed and then a second one at a slower speed for better accuracy. <clears throat> the retract distance is the distance that it backs up, retracts up after the first probe. So it can generally be a pretty small number, say uh, about a sixteenth of an inch or say a millimeter or so. And then you have your, uh, then it'll go back down for the second probe. Make sure your second probe distance is at least the retract distance, preferably a little higher. It could be quite a bit higher and it really doesn't matter because it's just going to stop when it hits the plate. 
but make sure it does make sure that it is indeed higher than the retract distance or larger. Then you have your probing feed rates. The first feed rate at a little bit faster to speed up the process. After the retract, it's going to probe at a slower rate. So you usually want that second one to be pretty slow to get more accuracy. Now, many people say that you don't need to probe twice, but some people have tested and found out that the second probe at a slower rate does indeed make it more accurate. This is probably something to do with machine stiffness, but for whatever reason, the two probe system seems to work better for most people. And you got your Z-axis home switch clearance as a safety setting, basically. When you uh, auto zero to different thickness parts, your clearance plane is in work coordinates, so it's going to be in different places at different heights relative to the surface of your part. If it happens to be, if your part's really tall and you don't have a lot of Z clearance, sometimes the clearance plane may want to send your tool up past the home switch. This, the home switch clearance setting is kind of a safety to prevent that. If it, the macro detects that it's going to crash into the home switch, it'll stop and give you a message giving you the option to either move to this value just below the home switch or to just stop the macro entirely. So you usually want to set this either to zero, which would be your home switch position, or a little bit below the home switch. Set it to a positive value even though it's it's actually a negative value in machine coordinates, but it won't let you set it to a negative value. So say you want to be an eighth of an inch or three millimeters below the home switch is the maximum you want the macro to retract to. Put that in there, and if it's going to exceed that, it'll stop and tell you and give you the option. Material offset is an option. You can turn it on and off with the checkbox. To set your Z0 at this point, at a relative position, a position relative to the to the plate. So say you want to uh, set your Z0 at a consistent 0.75 above your spoil board or above your table. You can set the material offset to 0.75 and turn it on. And when you zero to your table, it'll set Z0 to the distance in the material offset, not to the actual plate location. This can be handy for a variety of reasons, mainly if you have multiple parts of varying thicknesses but you want to run the same program on all of them. Delay spindle start option is for people that need to either manually turn on their spindle after the auto zero or to remove a alligator clip or a clip on ground wire from the tool that they need for the probing to work. It depends on your system on what you need but when you do an automatic tool change in the auto zero after the tool uh, zeroes on the fixed plate, it'll want to continue on with the G-code right away. So if your spindle doesn't have an automatic relay to start it, you'll need to pause and start it. Or if you have a clip on your tool for the zero, you're going to want to have time to remove it. So this pops up a message box, which gives you a little delay to do whatever you need to do. And then it'll pause the macro until you close the message box, and then it'll continue on with the G-code. And the last option to zero all offsets. Set Z0 for all offsets. Normally an auto zero macro will only zero the current offset, whether you're in G54, G55, G57. If you need to run a, run a program that uses multiple fixtures with different offsets, the Z0 needs to be set the same for all of them. You're going to want to check this box. Then when you do the auto zero, all the six offsets will we'll get the same Z0 position. And then that's your basic settings for the uh, Auto Zero in the 2017 screen set. So once you get those all set up, note that they're saved automatically when you close UCC and C. And they're normally in UCC and C you need to use the apply and save buttons anytime you change a setting. But the 2017 settings work a little bit differently you don't need the apply and you don't need the save. They're saved automatically when the UCC and C is closed. And they're usable immediately after you type them in because they're read directly from the DROs rather than internally as the UCC and C functions or settings are. So once you type them in, they're good to go. You can go back to the run screen and try them out.
I don't have a machine set up right now and I'm running in demo mode so I can't really do it but the auto zero is simply click on the auto zero and the tool will start coming down after about a one second delay till it hits the plate and it'll set your Z zero now remember the auto initial the auto zero initialize uses a fixed plate in order for UCC and C to find that fixed plate you need to home the machine first if you haven't homed the machine you're going to get an error message that the X and Y axis have not been referenced. So you need to home the machine, home the X and Y axis before attempting to zero the tool. And since the tool change basically uses the fixed plate as well, this button here is, is to change a tool by entering a tool number and typing, hitting, checking, pushing the uh, change tool button. That's going to give you the same error basically. You need to you need to run the auto zero initialize because you need to set the fixed plate location before you can change a tool. So you're going to want to make sure you have it all set up before you run any programs with a tool change or the macro is going to want to stop the program in the middle of your G code run because it's not going to allow you to change the tool if you haven't got everything set up prior to it. So um, same with the tool change. If you want to just change a tool before you run a part, you want to send the machine to a tool change position. The tool change position is on the function settings page as well in machine coordinates. And it note it has a safe Z option. So if you want to if your tool change position is rather low, but you want to go up and use safe Z on the way there, note that there's two different safe Z settings in the 2017 screen set. There's the default, the default safe Z, which is, in this screen set, is only used for run from here, which is a built-in UCCNC function. The safe Z1 used for run from here is in work coordinates. I added a second safe Z in machine coordinates, which is a much safer position because it's repeatable and constant. So the second safe Z, safe Z height 2, in machine coordinates is used for all 2017 functions that use safe Z. So if you back to the tool change position, <clears throat> if you check use use safe Z, when you go to go to tool change position, it's first going to go to the safe Z position, then it'll move to the XY tool change coordinates, and then finally down to the Z tool change coordinate. If you don't use save Z, it'll go to the Z first, then the X and Y position. But you need to home the machine before that's going to work. So that's the uh, basic uh, functionality and setup of the auto zeros in here. I don't have a, a machine again to set up and to show anything happening, but if you watch my earlier videos from the 2010 screen set, they show the basic same functionality and how it works on a machine with a machine in the video. So you can see how it's working. At some point in time, when it, maybe when it warms up a little bit, I'll be able to make a newer video that shows how it works a little bit better. But hopefully that covers it all. If there's any questions, you can email me and I'll do the best I can. And I'm working on a manual with a little more detail in it. so. I'm doing these videos to just kind of get people up and running if they need them, but we will have a real a detailed manual at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the screen set.